Welcome to The Faithful Steward. This is a podcast all about sharing biblical wisdom and practical insights in order to help church leaders pursue and teach financial freedom as part of Christian discipleship. We believe this is a spiritual conversation and this is a place where the church needs to lead the way in order to move our communities forward in how we steward God's resources. I'm your host, James Lenhoff, and I am so passionate about this conversation and helping leaders have the confidence to step into it. We believe that if we help people thrive financially and grow spiritually, it changes everything. And I am so excited to join you on this journey. This podcast is brought to you by GoodSense. If you'd like more information about what we're up to, you can go to our website at goodsensemovement.org. All right, let's get started with today's conversation. Today, I want to talk about the difference between stewardship and generosity. Now, you may be somewhat confused already. I know uh, a lot of people in the communities uh, that we lead are confused because we have used those words interchangeably. We have tied them so closely to each other that it makes sense that when I say I want to talk about how they're different, maybe some of you are immediately going, wait, they're, they're the same, right? I mean, are they different? They're effectively two words that describe the same thing. And I know that's how the church, Big C Church, in general has taught these two concepts. But I think in order for us to truly unlock the resources of the kingdom, we actually need to do a much better job of separating these two and talking about them individually. You may immediately recognize that the stewardship conversation is one that the church tends to have when it's asking for generosity. You know, you have a stewardship pastor or stewardship leader, and their job is to unlock the generosity of your community in order to fund campaigns, in order to uh, you know create opportunities to fund outreaches that you want to do, or service projects, or building campaigns. And so, because we use that word stewardship. So constantly with generosity, we think of them as one and the same, and so do our people. And this is why it's so messy. When we talk about teaching on stewardship, we have so often married that to a time when we are seeking generosity that we've burned those bridges. We've made it awkward a lot of times as a church. We've put ourselves out there to create resources, to fund projects we're trying to achieve, and we're doing it in the context of calling people to stewardship, but that's actually not what we're calling them to. What we're calling them to is generosity. What we want them to do is give us some of their money, but we're couching it as if we're asking them to be faithful stewards but we haven't done that work yet. One of the reasons why this is so confusing, and in fact, I would argue if you polled most of the people in the Christian community, hey, what do you think of when you think of the word stewardship? Most of them would probably come back and say something like, I think it means giving money to the church, because that's what we're always talking about when we use that word. If we recognize what we've done. We've set our people up for failure. We've set them up to certainly feel like they're failing because we call them to stewardship, quote unquote, stewardship, when we're really asking for their generosity, but they don't have a sense of abundance because they have not drawn any lines on how they're using their resources. Most of them are probably not really aware of how they're spending their resources. But more importantly, they still think of their resources as theirs. If we have not set the stage, if we've not built the foundational work that says none of this is yours, you are not an owner, you are a steward of all of these resources, not just your money, but your time and your talents, 
This is about you managing and honoring God with all of his resources, not you carving out some of your resources to give to our building campaign. But we haven't done that work. And so we wonder why when we bring up all of these campaigns and we're asking for generosity, it doesn't go very well or it gets awkward or it feels like we're forcing people into a sense of obedience. It's because they still think of all of this stuff as theirs. They're still managing it uh, unintentionally. They're still stepping into spending with an emotional, reactional type of approach rather than an intentional, thoughtful decision-making approach where they've chosen ahead of time what they're going to do. We haven't done any of this work. And the thing that's so frustrating is that it is nearly impossible for the outcome, which is what we're really seeking, of generosity to occur unless we do the work on the front end to create faithfulness, to encourage stewardship. And those conversations need to happen entirely separately. We need to be having conversations as churches about faithful stewardship and not be asking for generosity. We need to be talking to our people about what it looks like to honor God with his resources, recognize that they are all his resources, and that is a conversation that happens completely separate from a place where they can direct their generosity, because that's ultimately what we're asking them to do. If we set up for them an understanding of faithful stewardship and we build that into our constant dialogue as a church— we have language around it, we have structure around it, we help people with a framework for how to think about God's resources, then the natural outflow is generosity. We don't need to force obedience. We don't need to, to beg them or challenge them or, or call them to the mat to get them to give. They naturally will give if we do this work. Then the conversation about generosity is less about forcing their obedience or challenging them. It's more about pointing them in opportunities to direct that generosity into the things that we are trying to do as a community. What an incredibly different thought. We're not in this place of asking and seeking money from someone who thinks that this is still theirs. We're speaking to them in a way that says, hey, I know as faithful stewards, part of that equation is generosity. Now that that's established, now that you know that, hey, here's a few opportunities where you might want to direct that generosity. We have a building campaign. We're doing this outreach. We have this opportunity to dig wells in Africa. Whatever that looks like in your community, you are now giving them an outlet that the natural outflow of generosity can pour into. This is the order of things. This is actually how it needs to work. But we end up putting the cart before the horse. We talk about generosity as if it's stewardship. And then what I find is that people feel guilty. They feel ashamed because they don't have extra. They think of stewardship as the conversation that we have with people who have a lot of money because we're only talking about it when we're trying to raise a lot of money. They don't think it applies to them because they're still just trying to pay their bills. But if we separate these two and we have this stewardship conversation just be part of our natural discussion around Christian discipleship, it is just part of our calendar. We're in this discussion. We're using this language. We're helping our community speak the same language and think the same way about God's resources. That is just part of our ongoing conversation as a church. Then the generosity conversation is one where we are just assuming that they want an outlet for the generosity that they are that they are pouring out. They want to know where to send it. They want to know opportunities that they can engage in because now they see that they have extra. They see that all of it is God's. They're ready to then step into generosity. I think this is the key that unlocks an incredible amount of resources that are right now trapped because of an ownership mindset, because of 
uh, unintentional kind of thoughtless management of God's resources that are being seen as my resources instead of his. And we aren't going to get those resources released through challenging and calling people and, and telling them they need to give more. I think we actually unlock those resources by reminding them the role that they play, by calling them out of an ownership mindset and into a stewardship mindset. There are so many resources passing through the hands of Christian families every year in this country if we could just awaken in them the stewardship role then generosity is actually the easy part. But if we're only talking about stewardship in the context of generosity, we are banging our heads against brick walls because they can't release these resources into the kingdom when they still think of them as theirs. Once we help them see that they don't own anything, that they are simply stewards, the natural outflow is generosity, and the kingdom has more than enough resourcing to do the work that God is calling us to. Well, thank you so much for listening to the Faithful Steward podcast. Be sure to check out the show notes for links and other information that we mentioned in today's episode. Also, be sure to check out our website at goodsensemovement.org to get all the resources we offer churches to help equip them in teaching financial stewardship to their community. If you have any questions or any topics you want to make sure we cover on our show, you can email me at jameslenhoff at goodsensemovement.org. I'd love to hear from you. I hope you all have a great week. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you.